Hi guys, in this tutorial we'll talk about SWARF with constant incremental depth. So let's go ahead and open this file, SWARF const incremental depth underscore start. And in this file go ahead and start on the number 5 freeform that's already created. Now under the freeform tab, the SWARF operations here, so let's go ahead and click on that. I'm just going to reset all my settings so I can work this with you guys. Under general, let's call the operation name swarf morph. This is how Esprit originally did swarf cycles. Uh, let's go ahead and select the tool ball mill 3.175. Going to enter some feeds and speeds in here, so cut speed 5000 the feed rate a thousand. Let's go under toolpath. So all these settings should be good. Swarf input should be on profiles. So for the upper profile, let's select the cursor here. Now we can select our profile, so we'll select this upper chain, which should be swarf top profile. And then, uh, and then under lower profile, let's click the cursor again. We'll select this lower chain here, it should be named Swarf Bottom Profile. Stop at Floor, we'll say Yes. Uh, under Incremental Depth, we'll say Yes. Uh, we'll leave uh, the increment strategy at Morph. Uh, we'll change the depth to 2. And for profile synchronization down here, let's go ahead and adapt and use adapt TA for best fit. Now under links for the retracts, let's select uh, full clearance to 10 or change the value from 50 to 10. And then we'll change the full clearance from this face up here, which is actually the highest face in the part. See if I can get that selected. Here we go, phase 725. Now under entry, let's go ahead and modify some of these values. So for arc angle, we'll use 60. For arc radius, we'll put four. For vertical distance, we'll set it to one. And for ramp angle, we'll set that to 5. Let's go ahead and do that same thing for the exit. So for radius and lateral plane, I'll set the arc angle for 60. Arc radius to 4. This vertical distance to 1. And this ramp angle to 5. Under feed links, I'm going to go ahead and delete this bridge. So under maximum link distance, I'll change this to 10. Change the start arc angle to 60, end arc angle to 60. Change the start arc radius to four and the end arc radius to four. Let's go ahead and click OK. What you should see here is under the Swarf Morph, is that when Z changes, the tool is actually plunging for each incremental depth, which is what we don't want. We want to avoid that. Especially here, it's much more pronounced here. You can see, uh, you can see Z going down and plunging, which is not what we'd like for this op. So, let's go ahead and re-click on 5 Freeform. Let's click on Swarf. go back to the general tab and let's name this uh, constant. Let's go under toolpath and under the toolpath let's change our increment strategy to constant height. Let's leave everything else the same. Click on OK. Now you can see here where it was plunging 
in the morph uh, setting under constant height it actually just stays at the Z level and then stops the toolpath whenever it recognizes that there's no more material. So this concludes the Swarf Incremental Depth tutorial. If you have any questions, please let us know.